My name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on undergraduate combinatorics based on my book, Invitation to Combinatorics. This particular lecture is on generating function and is, a, and is the third one on generating function. And this one is about finding power series. And it's based on section 9.1 of my book. And it's the th third one in, 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 in that. So let's get started in combinatorics. We start with a sequence of numbers, H0, H1, Hn, and so on. This sequence might have come from a counting problem. And then uh, there are different ways of dealing with it, but the generating function method is to write a power series using those numbers. So we use the numbers H0, H1 to Hn, and we make ourselves a power series, H0 plus H1x plus H2x squared, all the way to Hn, x to the n, and so on. And our hope is that somehow we are able to understand something about those coefficients by understanding the function g of x. At least the function g of x, if we can write it as an enclosed form, um, will encode for us our whole sequence. Now, um, usually if you don't know what the sequence is, it might be difficult to imagine how going to a function that encodes all of the sequence at once can actually be helpful in a counting problem. And that's something we will um, encounter in future lectures when we use uh, the generating function method to actually do counting. For right now, our method is uh, what we want to do is a little bit simpler. So, but first, let me remind you of what these things are called. So, this function g is called the ordinary generating function or the ordinary power series for that sequence. And we write g is the OPS, ordinary power series, of the sequence Hn and going from zero to infinity. So previously, in the previous lectures, we started with such a sequence and then tried to say, well, how do we find a closed form for the generating function? Today, we want to do, go the other way around. We want to say that um, you start with a function. How do you retrieve information? Maybe um, find out what the sequence of coefficients are. This is actually something that you would do in calculus. You would start with a function, and you would say, well, what is its power series expansion? There are four approaches to this. So if someone gives you a function, a function walks through the door and you wanna know what the coefficients are. So what could you do? Well, the easiest thing to do is to use a computer algebra system. So if you use something like Maple Mathematical Sage, you can ask for uh, specific coefficients. You could say, well, I want the 47th coefficient or I want the 10th coefficient and it will tell you. Um, you could also use the calculus method. You could say, well, the power series is, this is the Taylor series at x equals zero, the Clarence series. So for g of x, it would be g of zero plus g prime of x, g prime of zero at a, times x plus g double prime of zero divided by two factorial x, x squared times x squared and so forth. And so the, um, the kth, uh, uh, the coefficient of the kth uh, term, x, the coefficient of x to the k, is the kth derivative at zero divided by k factorial. So you might want to try to find that. And, and sometimes what you can do is you can take successive derivatives and see what the pattern is and prove the pattern using induction. And if you can do that, then that's one way to find the, the coefficient of um, uh, the kth coefficient of the power series for g of x. In fact, in calculus, probably this is the only way that you went about doing it. Now, the other way to do it, actually you did this in calculus also, is to get the power series for GX from known power series. So start with something you already know and, um, and, and see what you can get. And today we will see some examples of that, or at least one example of that. Um, another thing you can do is not to try to find a, a formula for uh, the nth coefficient, but try to find a recurrence relation for the coefficients of the power series. Recurrence relations are very useful, as we know in combinatorics, and so you could have your aim to be finding a recurrence relation. And we will see an example of that as well. So we are going to look at these two last approaches uh, today. So uh, if you're going to use known power series, then we've got to know some. And, and there are two power series that are really important. One of them is the one that comes from the binomial theorem, that if you take one plus x to the n, then you get... Um, n choose zero plus n choose one times x plus n choose two times x squared and so on. So 
one plus x to the n is the ordinary power series for the sequence of binomial coefficients for one row of the Karajigia triangle, the triangle that's universally known as Pascal's triangle. Another one is uh, uh, the ordinary power series for multi-choose numbers. So uh, T multi-choose K, which comes up in combinatorics problems quite often, as you might know, is T plus K minus one choose K. And, and the um, ordinary power series for that is one over one minus X to the T. And this was the subject of the, uh, the, the, the lecture immediately preceding this one. So that one over one minus X to the T, if you expand that, the coefficients are the multi-choose numbers and, and that's an infinite series. Okay, so in other words, I'm just gonna repeat myself. One plus X to the N, if you expand it, um, you will get the coefficients you get are binomial coefficients. And if you write the Taylor series for one over one minus X to the T at X equals zero, the coefficients you get are multi-choose numbers. And, um, and, and these are the ones that we will use here. There are other ones that you could use also, uh, depending on the functions that you're dealing with. But in combinatorics, these two are uh, usually the go-to power series to start the process. So I'm gonna, here's our first example. We want to find out the power series for 4x squared minus 7 divided by x plus 5 to the 8th. Uh, so somehow or another, we have done some, uh, uh, we, we are interested in this function. We may, may have tried to solve it, a counting problem and we couldn't, but we could find out that the generating function is this thing. And now we want to know, okay, if this is the generating function. What are the coefficients? What are the, um, what is the sequence? So the first thing we do is, um, so we, we are looking for the coefficient of X to the N in the Taylor series expansion of this function at X equals zero. The first thing we do is we separate this uh, uh, fraction out and write it as four X squared over X plus five to the eight minus seven over X plus five to the eight. The advantage of that is that the coefficient of Xn in the whole thing is gonna be the coefficient of Xn here minus the coefficient of Xn in there. So, if they, so we can, we can um, do each piece separately and then combine. So we start with what they both the terms have in common, which is the one over X plus five to the eight. And I'm gonna write that as, I'm gonna factor a five inside from X plus five and when you do that, you get one plus one fifth X and that five raised to the eighth power comes out as five to the eighth. Why would I do that? Well, the reason I do that is because I wanna start with uh, what I know about one over one minus X to the eighth. That's the, the, the thing that I know with uh, X in the denominator and X to the eighth. And, and I know that that's going to be um, how we expand that. We get multi-choose numbers, eight multi-choose zero, eight multi-choose one times X, Eight multi choose times uh, eight multi choose two times x squared, and so forth. Now, from that, I want to get uh, um, the expansion of one over x plus five uh, to the eighth. And I see here that I want something with one plus one fifth x. So, how do I do that? Well, all you have to do is instead of x put minus one fifth x, and you will get this. So, wherever you see an x in, in that expansion, you put minus one fifth x. And one over one minus X to the eighth becomes one over one plus one fifth X to the eighth, which is closer to what we want. Um, and at the, the right hand side, instead of X as we again put minus one fifth X and we get this mess. So the typical term becomes minus one to the N over five to the N, eight multi choose N X to the N. And now all we have to do is multiply by one over one, um, um, uh, five to the eighth. So at this point, uh, we can we I can tell you what the coefficient of x to the n is on the power series expansion of one over x plus five to the eight. What it is is just the one that I had for one over one plus one fifth x to the eight, except I multiplied it by five to the eight in the denominator. So instead of five to the n, I have five to the n plus eight. So this little piece of information we're not going to use. Okay, so. This is what we found, that the coefficient of x to the n in the power series expansion of one over x plus five to the eighth is minus one to the n, uh, five to the n plus eight divided uh, times um, eight multi choose n. Okay, but, but what we wanted was four x squared minus seven divided by this. So then we say that, okay, what about the second one? Well, if, if I wanted like minus seven over x plus five to the eighth, well, that's not really any different than this one. I just have to multiply it by minus seven. And so what I get is that same thing as I had before, 
except multiplied by minus seven. So I put a seven here and I increase the exponent from n to n plus one of minus one. So I have that part. And then I want the coefficient of x to the n in 4x squared over x plus 5 to the 8. But what happens when I multiply 1 over x plus 5 to the 8 to 4x squared? Everything gets shifted. The constant terms becomes a coefficient of x squared. Um, the uh, coefficient of x squared becomes a coefficient of x to the fourth. Coefficient of x to the n becomes coefficient of x to the n plus 2. So what is the coefficient of x to the n? Is the coefficient of what used to be the coefficient of x to the n minus 2 of course, multiplied by an extra four. And so what I get is an extra four, but everything else in, in what I had originally, instead of n, I have to put n minus two because I want the coefficient of x to the n minus two in one over x plus five to the eight, so that when I multiply it by x squared, I get x to the n, and this is going to be the coefficient of x to the n in that expansion. So instead of n, I put n minus two in this n plus eight, and that became n plus six. Um, and instead of n, I put n minus two there. Instead of uh, minus one to the n, I got minus one to the n minus two. But minus one n to the n minus two is the same as minus one to the n. Um, and so what I have is that this is uh, the coefficient of x to the n in the power series expansion of four x squared minus seven divided by x plus eight. So I, I'm done. And I, and I, not, well, I, I, that was that one of them. But if I want to combine them, I have to put them together. Um, this was the, 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 the one for, for x squared over x plus five to the eight. This is the one for minus seven over x plus five to the eight. And so together, that's the coefficient of x to the n in the power series expansion. And I solved the problem. Uh, so this is sort of a complicated looking thing. And if I've gone the calculus route of trying to take the derivative of this guy, plug in zero and see what, a, what kind of a pattern I get, I probably would not have guessed this uh, right, away, right away. But this going back to the, starting with things that we know. And here we really basically started with the fact that we knew what one over one minus X to the eighth was, and we got this. Okay, now let's do another one. Uh, so let's do one over X squared minus five X plus six. We could try to do, doing the same thing, um, but to, do, to get to where we started in the previous one, what we have to do is actually do a partial fractions. So, um, you can take one over x squared minus five x plus six, factor the denominator, and, and you get x minus two times x minus three, um, and, and then say that, well, that, that we, maybe we can split that up into two fractions um, um, with, fra with denominators x minus two and x minus three, except I reserve judgment on what the numerators are, what a and b are, um, and then I solve this for a and b. This is what partial fractions method is. Surprising that we're using that in combinatorics, but, but we do. Um, we do we find a and b and we get that one over x squared minus five x plus six is minus one over x minus two plus one over x minus three. And then we proceed as before. And I'm not gonna do that here, but one over x minus three, for example, um, you, you factor a three and you get um, x minus uh, one third x minus one and, and one over one minus one third x, you, we, not, we, we can write down the power series of for that in terms of multi-choose numbers. And, and then we can do the same thing with the, with the other one and combine them just like we did in the previous example. But here, actually, I wanna do something else. I wanna show you how you get a recurrence relation uh, for um, the, the coefficients. So I have one over x squared minus five x plus six, and I wanna find a recurrence relations. And I say, well, okay, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if this is equal, what's the power series that of, of, of this function? Of course, when I say equals, I don't mean equals for all X because for that, I would have to know the radius of convergence. I'm, I mean equals for X's within the radius of convergence and for, uh, for some X's that this might be true. Um, and in fact, we don't care when it converges or not. We only care about uh, what the formally, what these coefficients are. If that's the case, I can cross multiply and I would get that X squared minus five X plus six times that equals one. Then I say, all right, um, if I multiply this out, what's the constant term? Well, the only way I'm gonna get a constant term is if I multiply six by A zero, and that's supposed to be equal to one. So I, uh, I will say that six A zero should be equal to one because that's the constant term on the left-hand side, and one is the constant term on the right-hand side. Then I'll say, well, what is the coefficient of X? How am I gonna get an X here? Well, I get an X if I take the six and multiply it by A1X, 
but also I get an X if I multiply minus five X by a zero and I don't get X's any other way. So the only way I, the coefficient of X on the left-hand side is six A one minus five A zero. What's the coefficient of X on the right-hand side? Well, it's zero. So, so these two have to be zero. So I have six A one minus five A zero equals zero. From the first one, I can get A zero. Then I plug it in here and I can get A one, but let's continue. What's the coefficient of x squared? Well, the way I'm going to get x squared is if I take six and multiply it by a2, a2, that gives me an x squared term. If I take this minus five and multiply it by a1, because that's minus five x and this is a1 x, I get an x2 term. And I can take the x squared term and multiply it by the constant on this side. And so that gives me six a2 minus five a1 plus a0, and that got to be zero. What about the x cubed term? Well. I can take the six and multiply it by the x cubed term, minus five by the x squared term, and x squared by the x term. And I will get six a three minus five a two plus a one equals zero. And from here on, I will always get the same pattern. And therefore I know what the general recurrence relation is. So uh, what I conclude is that a zero is one six. I got that from the first equation. A1 is 536. I got that by putting A0 equals 1, 6 and solving for A1. Um, and those are my initial conditions. But then after that, all of the terms follow the same, um, the same recurrence relation. For n greater or equal to 2, I always have 6an minus 5an minus 1 plus an minus 2 equals 0. And so I can solve for an. And I can say that for n greater or equal to 2, I have um, a n equals one six five a n minus one minus a n minus two, and so I have the initial conditions one six and five thirty six for the zero and the first term, and I also have a recurrence relation for the nth term for n greater or equal to two. So I did that without hardly any calculations. So um, uh, and 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 this is a helpful way uh, that that works often um, when you want to find. Um, I mean, as long as you have a rational function. And you can you are able to find um, a recurrence relation for the coefficients, even if you can't find um, the, the formulas immediately. Of course, from a recurrence relation, you can then um, try to find the formulas that way. And that's the end of this lecture. Um, I, starting with the next le next lecture, we'll see we'll see the combinatorial applications of generating functions. Till next time. <laughs>